A house in Virginia exploded Monday night shortly after officers were executing a search warrant at the residence for reports of a person discharging several rounds with a flare gun. The suspect, who was inside the Arlington duplex at the time of the explosion, is now presumed deceased. Police responded to the residence on the 800 block of North Burlington Street at approximately 4.45 p.m. Eastern Time, with reports of possible shots fired. Police stated in a statement that the preliminary investigation indicated that the suspect discharged a flare gun approximately 30 to 40 times inside of his residence into the surrounding neighborhood. Following the discharge, police attempted to make contact with the suspect and draw him out when the house exploded at approximately 8.25 p.m. Police officers sustained minor injuries and were treated on the scene and the fire has since been extinguished. Fire crews had evacuated other residents of the duplex and surrounding homes starting at around 7 p.m. Eastern time as a precaution, quote, which did save lives. The cause of the explosion is still under investigation and authorities are working to collect evidence from the scene. The fire department had turned off gas at the residence prior to the explosion and also stated that he could not speculate on any cause or origin of the explosion at this time. And that was according to Jenkins, who is Arlington County Fire Department's assistant chief. Arlington County Police Chief Andy Penn stated that human remains were recovered from the scene, but have not yet been identified. The suspect has been identified as 56-year-old James Yu, was the only person inside the residence at the time of the explosion and is presumed to be deceased. Quote, there is an ongoing threat to the community related to this incident and no outstanding suspects. Penn stated that police are aware of concerning social media posts made by the suspect, though did not elaborate. The suspect had been in touch with the FBI over the years via a phone calls, online tips, and letters with complaints about alleged fraud he believed were perpetrated against him. The complaints did not lead to the FBI opening any investigations. You operated a LinkedIn profile verified by ABC News that contained hundreds of pages worth of documents. The page, which has been removed from LinkedIn, suggests that he may have had financial problems and contained references to several legal disputes he initiated. According to the records from the United States District Court of the Western District of New York, you filed a medical malpractice lawsuit against a hospital back in 2018, claiming that he was hospitalized against his will in 2015. In 2021, he sued his ex-wife divorce attorney for $300 million, accusing them of fraud, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and other offenses. Both suits were dismissed with prejudice. According to the LinkedIn profile, you worked for a telecommunications company until 2003 and then was a landlord. Before the explosion, Savage stated that the barricade situation took place after attempts to make contact with the suspect were unsuccessful. Quote, during the early parts of it, after we have obtained a search warrant, we were attempting to make contact with the individual. Our SWAT team was on the scene at that point. We would determine that the incident would be a barricade because the suspect had not exited his residence. They also stated we were attempting to make contact with the individual when shots were discharged inside the residence. Right before the explosion, police were using non-flammable chemical munitions, a barricade because the suspect had not exited the residence. They also stated that we were attempting to make contact with the individual when shots were discharged inside the residence. Right before the explosion, police were using non-flammable chemical munitions to draw the suspect out of the home. Quote, officers began to deploy non-flammable, less lethal chemical munitions to multiple areas within the residence where the suspect was believed to be hiding. The purpose of this type of deployment is to cause irritation in hopes of compelling the suspect to surrender. Witnesses described seeing flares in the sky emanating from the area of the blast prior to the blast. Neighbors several blocks away described feeling the concussion from the blast in their homes. And about 10 houses were impacted by the incident. And the investigation remains ongoing. I feel like there's a lot to this story that we'll never know about because this is not normal type of behavior, right? They're stating that this man... Um, he was divorced. His wife took him for a lot of money. He felt as though that she was not specifically owed that money. He felt as though he was robbed and he wanted to go directly after the divorce lawyer for $300 million, right? 
And then it was also stated that he had other lawsuits, specifically with a hospital for, you know, some other things. And then they had other documentation directly up there, but they promptly decided to take down that LinkedIn. Quite suspicious. If this dude has been doing this for years, putting up all of these, you know, disputes or whatnot, whatever, then I feel as though this is something that should stay up there so that everybody can analyze the situation and get the most information specifically out of this. But again, like they usually do, they tend to scrub any evidence or any information about an individual when it comes to these things, because pay very close attention. When it deals with any high profile case, they'll make sure to scrub the person's Facebook, They'll scrub the IG or the Twitter, pretty much any social media that the person has. They will make sure that it was as if they never existed. And nobody finds that suspicious. Nobody finds that problematic. Why would the powers that be decide that they want to get rid of any and all information? And the only person that seems to have the information is quote unquote mainstream media. And yet again, we know how mainstream media tends to skew certain types of angles or information and things like that. But yet, here we are. Here we are yet again, where we got a high profile case and an individual that the police were looking for. Guess what? He doesn't exist. They stated that he's deceased. Um, We don't know that. We don't see a body. Uh, The house blew up and they said that there were remains at the scene. Again, we don't know what anything is. They can say anything because they have the whole area blockaded. So no one can pretty much get in or out. And they were the only ones that were able to get into the house. And then coincidentally, out of all of the times that they stated that this man shot flares out of his home, the moment in time that the police were attempting to get to the door from another angle, magically the house just completely goes up. And I'm like, nobody finds that suspicious like that explosion. I'm like, if there was any evidence of something serious there, you're not going to find it now. You're not going to find it. Like whatever that might have potentially been there, it's not salvageable. Unless it was a black box. And I'm pretty sure it's not a black box. But any type of cell phone records, anything like that, chances are you're not going to be able to get anything from that. Any type of uh, laptops or hard drives or uh, DVDs that the person might have had or or maybe like a SIM um, or a disc or whatever, you're not finding any of the evidence. That explosion literally knocked out that whole house. It turned it to dust in a matter of seconds, a matter of seconds. So again, I'm just simply asking, what's the full version of the story. What things are we not specifically being told? Because again, we've seen incidences like this where there's a barricaded house and the person doesn't want to come out and the police have this back and forth with the suspect. And either two things happen. The person basically gives up or the police basically go in and they take the person out. Those are usually the two ways that this normally goes. To have an instance such as this, where you have a house explosion, And it is so large and it pretty much takes out the whole house, including whatever else might have been in the house that, um, you know, could have been used against him or other individuals. Again, I I find it highly suspicious. Like I said, who was this person linked to? Who does this person know? Who is he tied to? What does he specifically or what did he know? That was of the utmost importance that, you know, he felt the need to act out, you know, in this type of manner or this type of way in order to get some type of attention specifically on. Again, there's a lot of stuff directly to the story. There, there's there's I have a lot of questions and I'm pretty sure I'm never going to receive any of those answers because things will become cold cases. Things will be covered up. And usually the moment in time when people start digging a little bit too deep, start getting a little bit too close to the truth. That's when problems really start to arise. Right. And last but not least, I just want to highlight the simple fact that you're not going to really hear Asian Americans talking about this. Right. This is one of their own who decided to do this, that this actually happened too. 
I would think that they would want to inquire and try to get as much information as possible so that they could set the record straight. So, you know, later on in the future, this won't get seemed or deemed as something that is starting to become a type of normalcy. Right. But, you know, again, maybe it's just me. But, you know, like I said before, you know, what, what happened to stop the Asian hate? What happened to all of those people that stated that they cared about the lives of Asian Americans, how it is that they live every day, you know, where their mental is at this moment in time? Where are all of those people to specifically get into contact with these people who are having, you know, a mental lapse, who are having an issue? Right. Who are crying out for help because literally he was crying out for help if he was sending 30 to 40 flares directly out of his house. Right. From at least what they stated. If he was if he was doing that much. Yeah. They said police said in a statement that a preliminary investigation indicated that the suspect discharged a flare gun approximately 30 to 40 times from his side of his residence into the surrounding neighborhood. He did this 30 to 40 times. That's somebody that's pretty much lost on an island. And they're looking for any type of help. They're hoping that somebody is going to see these flares at a moment in time. Somebody is going to see this call for help. But obviously nobody saw that call for help. His family didn't see it. His friends didn't see it. The social justice warriors online didn't see it. Everybody who wanted to put up hashtag stop the Asian hate didn't see it. Biden didn't sit up there and see it. Nobody saw it. Up until it was too late and other lives would have been potentially at risk due to how far gone on the deep end this person was. But again, like I said before, I feel like there's more to this story that we're not being told. And there it is.